top one running and the bottom one. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views. Sam I.B. DeGangi doing political commentary for The Media Speaks. The last Dunce Cap of the Month award show. I was just telling Facebook. The last one for the year. And I think a lot of... Here, I just want to show this off real quick. I want to make, I want to anger as many uh, whiny liberals as possible and show how little I care about the Me Too movement. Yes, I said it. I do care if somebody was harmed in some way, of course. But this hasn't. This isn't about whether or not someone was harmed. This is about attacking men. This is about making it look horrible. This is about making men look bad for no other reason than the fact that they're men. And quite frankly, friends, I'm tired of. I'm unbelievably tired of it. I'm tired of what used to be liberalism coming on. That used to be that you could remember, uh, yo, the People versus Larry Flint. The argument that made him win in court was when he said openly, "You might not like what I'm saying. You might not like what I'm publishing. You don't have to buy it." I still have the right to do it. That used to be what liberalism was. And for a long time, I considered myself one. And then as it's moved on here, I've realized that this isn't something I can be a part of because now it is about silencing people. It is about taking their jobs away, which I saw happen firsthand. It is about forcing everybody into this leftist ideology this political correctness that has just gone into overload. And it's even reached a point now to where liberals are making absolute asses out of themselves and offending more people than the people they're supposed to be against. And if you doubt me on that, I, I can offer you this, USA Today. First one of our Dunce Cap of the Month Award uh, almost winners here. Man who yelled, Heil Hitler, Heil Trump, at the Fiddler on the Roof, said, I'm so embarrassed. Now, for those of you that don't know, the Fiddler on the Roof is a musical about a Jewish family that was ran out of their city and their town prior to the start of World War II uh, in Russia. And the, the book is even worse than the movie. In, in, the, in the movie, in the musical, he, I should say movie and the musical, they, um, he gets, he's moving to America. He has some idea where his family is. In the original book, I had only learned this rather uh, recently, the Jewish man was destroyed. His family was, I believe, killed. It was. It's a very eye-opening story. So some brain-dead leftist decided that he wanted to go ahead and turn this into a good opportunity to start berating Trump for being some kind of Hitler, which makes absolutely no sense, of course, because many people in Trump's family are, in fact, Jewish. And beyond that, um, they're also Catholic. His wife is Catholic. And the Jews, as well as the Catholics, were uh, treated terribly, as history shows from Nazi Germany. So this makes no sense whatsoever. Zero. But I'm going to go ahead and let you guys listen to this idiot here. And uh, those of you on screen share at Media Speaks can see it. How Hitler Heil Trump. Now listen to this. He's now apologizing for his behavior. Anthony Der Lunas, 58, was removed from the theater shortly after the outburst began. The Hippodrome Theater said in a statement, I'm so embarrassed and ashamed and disgusted with myself, DeLunas told WBAL-TV 11 in a tearful apology while concealing his face from the news cameras out of fear. Yeah, I would imagine so, because everybody now knows what a blithering idiot you are. Uh, DeLunas and his frustrations with President Donald Trump boiled over during the play. 
And uh, he's blaming Trump for his outburst. Friends, another the devil made me do it story. Another instance where somebody feels that they have the right to force their views onto everybody else. And for that matter, to actually lie about a good man. Because there's nothing about Trump that's anything like Hitler whatsoever. Zero. Okay. Hitler was throwing people out of the country who were rightfully there. Donald Trump is trying to prevent people from coming into the country who shouldn't be here. There's a difference. I was trying to compare. Listen to what this idiot says. I, USA Today is an awful site, by the way. If you want to fact check me on this, go right ahead. But be warned, they have the clunkiest site you've ever seen. And it doesn't really work well. I was trying to compare Trump to Adolf Hitler because he plays into the fears of people and it just came out wrong, he told the station. Yeah, because there's a right way to do it. In the moment, it was just my frustration and I don't know what I was thinking. The shouting prompted attendees at the Hippodrome Theater to run for exits and spark the fear that he had begun shooting. So basically, trying to stand up against the evils of Trump, this idiot ruined somebody's whole day. Or ruin a number of people's whole day. People that paid to see the play had their good time ruined. All of this happened because one self-righteous bonehead decided that he was going to try to stand up and uh, show everybody how awful Trump was. He was probably trying to get people to cheer for him, trying to get Jews to say, yeah, to hell with Trump. Even though Trump hasn't done anything but goodness towards the Jews. If anything, he's almost leaned too far the other direction as some people see it. Now, I personally am happy that the Palestinians were told to take a flying leap and the embassy is in Jerusalem. I'm sorry, that made me very happy. However, some people are upset about that because they blame the Jews for attacking Gaza. Well, the Jews wouldn't be attacking Gaza if the Palestinians in Gaza weren't attacking the Jews. So they kind of got what they deserved. That being true, I don't think we can overlook the fact that there needs to be, and I know that Islamists are a big reason why this isn't happening right now, but there needs to be a way that both of them decide exactly how they're going to share this land. Because if not, these wars are never going to end. These problems are never going to end. And idiots shouting during German uh, Jewish performances of musicals won't stop either. Friends, we got two left. The media equalizer here. Listen to this. Leftist outlet attacks Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer as bigoted and seriously problematic. This is by uh, Martin Walsh. I actually uh, worked with him at the media speak. I mean, at the uh, Conservative Daily Post. A far-left media outlet has taken on the war on Christmas to a new level and now argues that Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is bigoted, problematic, and a marginalized reindeer. The all-out attack on the classic Christmas film began when the Huffington Post, who is really borderline, uh, they're not fake news, but they, they stretch it, it tweeted a video from its official Twitter account. The tweet claimed that viewers are noticing the tale may not be so jolly after all. goes on to say that the holiday TV classic Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer is seriously problematic, which we tweet read. The video clip goes on to argue that Rudolph's father verbally abuses him in the film and that Santa is too aggressive towards Donner, one of the reindeer for his son's nose. Never mind the fact that the story is trying to show that Everyone changed. Donner's heart softened. Even Santa's heart softened. Even Santa can make a mistake. That is sort of the lesson here. But no, not if you're your average raging leftist. The far left outlet also claims that the reindeer school coach encourages bullying and that the film is packed with sexism. HuffPost also took issues with Donner forbidding his wife from joining the search for their son. Rather than viewing that he was protecting her from danger, the HuffPost argues that Donner is sexist. Yeah, because he didn't want his wife to also be lost along with his son. He wanted the other reindeer that she may be in charge of to simply freeze in the cave. I told you the dunce, the dumdy of the day, the dunce cap of the month, you don't want to miss him. I've told you in the past. 
Many on social media were so flabbergasted by the video that they originally thought it was a parody. But it didn't take long for many to realize that the leftist outlet was serious. Yeah, and Snopes had to cover it. And then again, if you read something in Snopes, do not take them for the factual outlet that they claim to be. They're not at all. But it triggered a massive outpour of responses from users who were angered over the liberal language. Uh, Casey Dillon wrote, that's the point. It's supposed to show that Rudolph overcame bullying. So simple-minded. Why does the lefty, Lisa Booth asked, try to ruin everything? Well, after leave Rudolph alone, you nutjobs. I think your kids have more to worry about with you as parents than them watching this movie. Uh, Paul Joseph Watson, one of the best journalists alive today, wrote, The whole point of Rudolph is that people were mean to him. He rose above it and thrived. Think about it. It's true. Nobody was glorifying what Santa Claus did to Rudolph. Everybody was cheering Santa Claus for having changed his mind about him. Huff thinks it's uh, uncovered some dark historical example of bigotry by pointing out that people were rude to Rudolph. Yes, that's the entire frig point of the frigging story. You absolute nuts. Melts. So, friends, you also have to understand, they tried to say that uh, the dentist, the little dentist, was gay. So he was being picked on because he was gay. No, he was being picked on because he wanted to do something different than other people did. And it's supposed to be something that you think liberals would be cheering, but no, because their main goal here is to attack Christmas. The Washington Post published a piece on Monday criticizing the First Lady for skipping the press preview of the decorations. And they were attacking her spooky Christmas decorations and scary, ominous trees because the red trees of death is what Slate called them. Why? Because she wanted to pick a different kind of tree. Because she didn't want to follow the norm here. They call her Christmas trees the shining where blood flows. Absent red and green are Christmas colors. She just picked something a little different and everybody freaked. Why? Because they're ridiculous enough to not only attack the precepts of Christmas, not only to attack the Savior's birth, which is historically provable, by the way, but also to attack anyone who believes in Christmas. And friends, that brings us to the dump cap of the month winner. Before I do it, I want to ask and remind you guys for help here. This is listener supported. That means I make nothing, zero, zilp, zitch, nada, not one red cent, unless you guys donate. And if you wish to do so, you can do so at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. Um, no, I got a comment here from Jeff Stoll. He was a right-wing Trump nut. No, no, he was not, my dear friend. And the reason you can tell that is the USA Today article quotes this man as saying that he did it in order to attack Mr. Trump. So I thank you for listening, my friend, but you are mistaken there. Um, that was much more polite than I normally am. It's Christmas, I know, I know, I'm losing myself. All right, friends, um... The winner here, Ohio radio station stops playing Baby It's Cold Outside after listener expresses concern over the song's lyrics. Now, I know you guys probably suspected that I was going to give it to this one because it's impossible for anything else to win. I thought that it was going to have to win in January because I only do them for the month they came out. So I... The dumbest story for November comes in December because I need to know what the dumbest stories in November are, which I can't do until November is over. Yes, I figured that out all by myself. However, I was delighted when I looked. I did to do some searching. I thought it was before Christmas, and this did land on November the 30th. So thankfully, it counts. A radio station in Ohio has pulled Baby It's Cold Outside from its lineup, after a listener expressed concern over the holiday song's lyrics. It's a Christmas song. Thank you. According to Fox 8, WDOK Christmas 102.1. Keep in mind, Christmas 102.1. Remove the tune after one listener called the radio station and suggested that it's not appropriate to play the 1940s classic in 2018. It's really our decision. It really wasn't our decision, WDOK host. Desiree told the outlet, it's our decision to our listeners 
People might say, oh, enough of that, me too. But if you really put that aside and listen to the lyrics, it's not something I would want my daughter to be in that kind of a situation. She said explaining the tune might be catchy, but let's maybe not promote that sort of idea. For one thing, when the song says, what's in this drink, that's a saying from 1940s. It's kind of like uh, people, uh, I'm going to swear, okay? I'm going to swear. I'm going to use the S word, so don't freak. It's like someone saying, that's the shit. People in 1940 are not going to realize that that's a compliment. That's not going to happen. So people are taking that line, what's in this drink, out of context. That's not what that meant. It didn't mean that somebody put poison with their drink. It didn't mean any of that. That's not what it meant, okay? People, uh, according to Fox 8, the Cleveland radio station said they conducted a poll on the website with a majority of voters in favor of removing the song. However, the results were not visible online. Yeah, because it's a lie. A separate poll on the radio station's Facebook page did show the results and were quite different. 92% out of 600 voters were in favor of playing it, while 8% were not. They said it was inappropriate. Okay, what's in this drink? Meaning, baby, cold outside. Now... The fact that people are literally having a problem with this, and don't tell me that it's not much worse today, because I'm a DJ in a strip club, and I don't have a problem with any of that if someone chooses to do that. However, to imply that the treatment of women in music today that is praised by the left. Jay-Z, for instance, went to the White House when Obama was in it. And he talks about women worse than just about anybody else in the world. He says worse things about black women than any white people do. That's, that's easily proven. So you've got everyone now trying to pretend that they're holier than thou. And I'm sorry, you're losing a lot of us. And that's one of the reasons you lost the 2016 election. And it is... I'm sorry, it is that simple. What's in this drink? All right, we got it to come up here. We're going to go to it. As my computer again wants to go at slow speed. The uproar appears to center around the lyric, say, what's in this drink, according to News Channel 5. It's a line that stands out, especially in the context of the Me Too movement. But Susan says the movement doesn't get it. I just think it's a mistake to attack that particular song. It's not a rape song, it's a flirt song. Social history suggests that that particular line had a different meaning. Wow, I don't know what's in, I don't know what's in this that's affecting me, so what's in it? In other words, um, it's like saying, oh, I've lost my religion for a second, and then swearing. Oh, I don't know what's in this drink, but I guess you can stay. It's a saying. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to show you the dunce cap that I am mailing them. Um, and again, it costs me to mail these, so please, if you're watching and enjoy this, donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. It pays for me to send these and other things. I am going to get my studio back once the carpeting is done and the whole place is redone. It's been taking forever. The person who was repairing it was injured. It's a nightmare. All right, so here it is. Dunce. Oh wait, this is from the, uh, this is the prior one. I am two months back in mailing these. And where is my other hat? Where is the other hat? Oh, I hope I didn't take it to the studio. Uh, let me go ahead and get, read you the award real quick anyway, and then I have to find the hat because I'm mailing them out at one time. I'm, like I said, I mail them one month behind. Here we go. I found it. I mail them one month behind. Again, because of the way I just told you that I filmed them, of course. All right. So you are on YouTube. You get to actually see this as well. Uh, the dunce cap. Not. Now, where did that come from? Let me call up the correct award. Now, this is one of my better ones. I was very happy with the way that I worded this in general because I think that, let's face it, let's, let's just be real here for a second here. I'll show you the hat first. WDOK is not okay. Um, 
You are a dope. Now that is a Christmas tree with great big eyes, which people are doing. People are putting eyes on their Christmas tree. I think that's hilarious. Here's a house. Get out, no matter how cold it is. That's the new liberal way, of course. And you wouldn't be right without WDOK sucks from a very unhappy and angered Santa Claus. Like I said, I was very happy with this one, as I am with the award. And I'm going to read it to you here and screen share it like I promised to do for my YouTubers. Hitting share and waiting for this picture to come up. taking forever. All right. The Dunce Cap of the Month Award. Again, uh, Facebook people, I'm going to go ahead and put this on in the comment line so you guys get to see it. This Dunce Cap of the Month Award goes to the Blithering Idiots at FM WDOK 102.1 for catering to the much overhyped Me Too movement and banning the Christmas classic Baby It's Cold Outside for failing to understand that the drink reference meant at that time, and that it was written, as well as thinking that FM radio matters to anyone. No one would be listening to notice if, no one would be listening to notice the ban if it wasn't piped into stores. You win without hesitation the Dunce Cap of the Month Award. And if uh, you, I def want to see it, there you go. All right, friends, that's it. That's the Dunce Cap of the Month Award show. Do me a favor. Please donate to the show if you can. That was my tripod falling over, or at least what I use as a tripod. Uh, thank you for listening, friends. Please remember to donate uh, the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal. And I'm shutting off this one. And all right, Facebookers, I'm going to go ahead and post it for you guys to see in just a second. God bless.